It's Dating with Katie. Thanks so much for joining me. And today we're talking about what you should be caring about. My last episode was, who cares? Why are you caring about these little things? And today's episode is, yes, you should care about these things and why. So you're going to want to stay tuned. And thank you so much to Sync Matchmaking, tried, true, and trusted matchmaking. I work with them. I love being a matchmaker. If you want some coaching, matchmaking, even help with photos in your life, I am the woman for you. Email me, Dating with Katie, or go to this link right here, get in the database, and after that, make sure you subscribe so you can make sure to get all of these tips and tricks that are going to be coming at you twice a week, 15 minutes, 1% of your day. You got to love it. All right, you guys. Well, before we get started with what you should be caring about, I want to share with you some date feedback. Now, as a matchmaker, I set up the entire date. I actually pick the venues. I'm very picky about that. I understand what a romantic date should be like, quiet. No coffee dates when you hire a matchmaker. And this is true feedback from just last week. I have a client. He is tall, good looking, successful, older. He's in his later 60s, but he doesn't look that and his energy is off the charts. So of course, you guys know that it's not about the number, it's about the energy. And I put him on a date with a beautiful 50 year old, super into yoga. Her kids are out of the house now. She's in her 50s. She too is from the Midwest, which I think is a great fit. And Midwest people tend to like Midwest people. But let me, let me just read directly what she said on the date feedback form. The question is, what did you like about your match? She said, I like that he, my date dressed well and looked handsome. He was a gentleman. He was a good listener. He had interesting things to interject and add to things that I talked about. Always good, guys. Don't just sit there and listen because I know the idea is, oh, I'm a good listener. No, you need to interject, be uh, an active uh, participant in what she's sharing. He's older, I'm a big fan of, which I like because a man has more life experience and perspective to draw from. He was accidentally an hour early. That was not my fault. (laughs) I gave him the correct time, but never hurts to be early. She said, I like that he was early and and arranged to have a great outside table ahead of time. By the way, if you're ever in Orange County, you want to go to Pelican Hill Golf Course They have the Coliseum, which is their pool restaurant. Spectacular view. Absolute gorgeous sunset. One of my favorite places for dates. It's quiet. They give you blankets. You can sit out there for hours. It's not the CBC crowd. It is one-on-one date night. Fantastic. She said, I am also an on-time or an early person as well. I like that he had good table manners and treated the waitstaff kindly. We are both from Midwest states, Ohio and Michigan, respectively, so we have similar backgrounds. He is intelligent and well-spoken. I absolutely appreciated that because I need a man who could match my cognitive and verbal ability. I like that he's been married once for the experience of knowing what it takes to be in one, and also it incentivizes the desire to make sure the next marriage is the one that lasts and is really good. I love this. I like that he's in a stage of life where he wants to keep some professional endeavors to to fulfill his masculine side, and also is ready to travel and enjoy the world with a vivacious, fun woman. Reminder, ladies, they are looking for fun, fit, and feminine. And yes, we women are looking for men who have got their ducks in a row. I like that he's a social drinker, and that's fun. Not an alcoholic, vapor, or weed smoker. Yeah, no thanks. Which happens, even in these older stages, I've seen people who do that. I can't imagine. Lastly, I love that a professional at this thing called dating and love arranged the date. That's me. It felt so much safer and fun for a first meeting. I was able to spend the time being present, not worrying about things like if he really is who he says he is, etc. Thank you so much for that compliment. And it's true. When it's a match made date, it's vetted. You know that I'm on both sides of the team. I want both of you to have seen each other's pictures, be excited about the date. We don't do any of this blind matchmaking. That's silliness. And I really want it to be a good fit because their win is my win, right? It's good for me. Now, I do also want to share real quickly what she said she didn't like. So you guys can hear it direct from the date's mouth. She said a couple things that were of note, but not things I didn't necessarily like. I couldn't tell at all if he liked me, didn't like me, was bored or having fun. Now, I got to agree with her on that. You've got to show a little bit of spark and spunk. Otherwise, people can't read you. She said, if someone doesn't know me, they can't tell if I'm quirky or what. I totally get it. But he didn't give compliments or say things that he was specifically enjoying throughout the date. Guys, we do not read your mind. It is okay to be direct and honest. We also asked her, what can we improve for next time? She says, oh my gosh, nothing. You exceeded in the area of personal qualities, career, age, views that a potential husband and life partner would possess for me. 
just right on and you've opened me back up to desiring to be found by the right man who wants to get to know me, adores me, and doesn't want to let me go. Yes. I think his more stoic, reserved nature balances with my light, playful, feminine one. Like Dr. Phil and his wife. She's very, she's spot on with that. That dynamic works well and I don't mind it. You definitely are professionals who know what you're doing. Bravo and thank you. I've been in hermit mode for a year and I can't wait to go on more dates now because you did such an awesome job. Isn't that the point? This is why we make dating fun again. So you guys, make sure you're in my database. The link is at the bottom. Click, get in, send me your best photos. Tell me about you. Make it memorable and I will reach out and put you on a date. Or if you want to be a client and go out with amazing women like this who are well-spoken, fully healthy, beautiful, and ready to enjoy the world, make sure you also get in that database and I will get in touch with you. And today's topic is things you should care about when you're looking at someone's online profile. I talked to my last one about things you need to let go of, maybe things that are holding you back, reasons why you're swiping left all the time, no one's good enough. Those are very true and I hope you at least found one or two that you can kind of start to blend in and swipe right on. Well, these are yeses, these are swipe rights, these are give this guy a chance, this woman is quality. These are what I love. So the very first thing that you should be swiping right on because you should care about this is if they're talking in a positive way. If they're smiling in photos, that's already positive. If they're looking and they're healthy and they're doing active healthy things, that's positive. And if they're speaking positively. Now, I talked about this in a previous episode where we talk about what not to write in your bio. Do not write negative things. It's that simple. All the things you don't want in somebody, all the things, all the past experiences you've already had. I mean, you only have 300 words in Bumble. Really? You're going to spend it on that? So spend it on positivity. I'm not talking about popping in a meme there. Don't use that for a photo. We talked about that. Speak positively. Talk about how fabulous your life is. Talk about your passions. When you see somebody who is in that zone, who is writing about that, who is, who is using photos that speak that, swipe right. Number two, this is a such a plus. You should care that this person has not brought up sex. If nowhere in their bio, if nowhere in the DM, they have not brought it up, winner. We have a winner. Uh, We want to be meeting with those people. We want to go on a date with that person. Guys, I'm telling you this right now. When you bring up sex this early, when you bring up anything that has to do with physical intimacy, stop. That is way too fast, too soon, and quality women will not put up with it. So when they haven't brought it up, and maybe they are a little shy, and maybe they are a little dorky, and maybe they're, they're not the guy who's going to be, you know, full of spark and chemistry on the first date because he's actually being the polite guy. Ladies, swipe right for Pete's sake. And if you're going to be the woman who's bringing it up, then don't be surprised if he's batting back at you because you are already pursuing that. So keep it clean. Keep the line drawn. And make sure that if, if he is a good man and keeping that clear, you should care about that, ladies. He is a good guy. Number three, if they are being engaging in your banter. Now, we're going to talk about banter in the next couple episodes because that's huge. That is flirting. That is how we get to the chemistry on the date. That's the buildup. So they need to be engaging on that. If they are never on, if they take a week to get back to you, if they always have an excuse, you know what? You can't put a lot of effort and care into that because you don't have that much to give. So you should only be putting your care and your energy into someone who is giving that right back at you, who is engaging back with you, who is asking you those questions. Guys, reminder, if she asks you a question, ask her the same question back or a derivative of that question. Be an active listener and an active engager. So number four, if they are in therapy, if they read a lot or if they listen to podcasts, you should care about that. That is a person who is doing the work I talked about this in a podcast and I asked you guys on Instagram, would you date someone? Do you guys just jump in? You know, do you jump in and do you want to date someone who's just jumping in or do you want to be with someone who's doing the work or do you want someone who's got all their ducks in a row? Look, no one's ever going to have all their ducks in a row. So as much as you want to work on that, that's great. That's a good pursuit. And I like that because that's going to be someone who is in therapy, who is reading books to grow and who is listening to podcasts. That is already you. You need to find that equivalent. And so when they talk about that, ask that question. What's the last book you read? Who is your favorite podcast besides Dating with Katie? Um, what, ask them that intriguing question. Maybe don't ask, do you go to therapy? A little much. I know that's kind of like the new like vetting process. But these are the other questions that you could be asking to see if they're about self-help, self-growth, and learning. And the last one, 
here's the deal guys you are to be putting the effort in so ladies if he is making the effort if he is reaching out to you if he is contacting you if he circles back you know what that's a good guy and you should care about that because ultimately chemistry is going to fade you want a man who will continue to put the effort in and ladies here's your job when he puts the effort in when he's reaching out on dms when he's writing little messages when he's checking in about your day you need to mirror that if you like him that much back you need to show him that energy that is equal to his if you're not that into him then let him go and spend that energy on someone else but you still don't know anybody yet so if they are putting that time and energy into texting you dming you trying to get you to a phone call that's good you should care about that if he's just wasting your time i call this um a toaster texture I had a girlfriend, she was dating, not dating, I'm sorry. She went on a date with a guy and two weeks go by and he sends her a bunch of texts. He's out shopping. What toaster should I get? He's out doing something else, asking for her opinion. She's like, if you're not going to ask me on a date, don't waste my time, right? For two weeks, he, we call him the toaster texter. He's sending her texts about random stuff. What a waste of time. His effort was junk. His effort to get her on a next date was not there and so I told her stop spending any effort back if the man can't make a move first tell him to make a move say look are you interested in a second date or not but if at any point these guys are making that effort and they are being directed with you ladies you need to put that energy back in and mirror that now you shouldn't be going ahead of that because you still want him to pursue you but you definitely should be dropping the hanky and making sure that when he picks it up and comes over you are sending the message that you are into him. And those are the things that you should be caring about. So stop overthinking this dating thing. I really think when women, and we'll talk about this later, but when women go on dates, they're, they're overthinking everything. You, all you've seen is a photo. All you've read is a bio. You've not even heard their voice yet. So stop caring so much about the storyline. You're living on fantasy island. You've got to come back to reality Get to know and see if these people are checking these positive things off. Are they speaking positively in their bios? Are they not bringing up sex and sexual things? Are they engaging with you? Are they doing the work on themselves that you too should be doing? And are they putting in effort? Effort is everything in this world of dating right now, you guys. So let's do a better job of guys putting that effort. And ladies, if you like them back, return that effort. All right, you guys, thanks so much for joining me today. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure that you get in my database and we will see you next time.